Hello and welcome to Japanese craft beer reviews. Uh, today we will look at the uh, begin looking at a series of beers and those beers are not Japanese. They are craft, uh, although some people are kind of feeling that at this point they are maybe becoming mainstream because they've tried too hard to be unusual, to be uh, indie, to be uh, everything that is not major major brewery beer. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but uh, this brewery is called Brewdog. Brewdog. And they have been around since 2007. They were founded by uh, two guys in the UK. They are a British brewery. I'm sorry, Scot well, a Scottish brewery, yes, uh, British. Uh, and they, uh, those two men are James Watt and uh, Martin Dickey, and they founded their brewery in Scotland. And uh, uh, they have, uh, they immediately uh, became known or famous, and I guess the word is notorious. Uh, notoriety is probably the word to use for their uh, approach to marketing. Um, they uh, immediately started out with some unusual names, uh, things like uh, like this beer, Dead Pony Club, um, uh, and they uh, actually uh, started uh, marketing, crowdfunding in 2011, and sell selling shares called Equity for Punks. Um, their uh, containers, uh, they they made they sold a beer in a, uh, a dead squirrel, or a, actually. A, piece of taxidermy, but a squirrel, you can find this online, holding the bottle for an outrageous price. Um, and they've had clashes with CAMERA, uh, the British Association for uh, to, uh, to uh, promote real ale. Uh, they've had clashes with CAMERA about uh, their, their attendance at uh, CAMERA festivals. And um, in any case, they're pretty well known uh, and they do export to a lot of different countries. Uh, they produce a lot of beer these days. In 2012, they moved to a new brewery in a place called Elon, E-L-L-O-N, in Scotland. And uh, they have five breweries around the world now. And they've even expanded into hotels. They have three hotels. I think two of them are in Columbus, Ohio, in the U.S. Um, and they have 78 bars around the world. So uh, wherever you are in a, in a maybe a major city around the world, there's a very good likelihood that you can find a BrewDog bar. Uh, in Asia, uh, well, they opened one in Tokyo, uh, one in Seoul, and one in Shanghai. Uh, and I, in Tokyo was pretty early, 2008, uh, so right away. I'm sorry, no, that was a beer, never mind. Uh, I've never been to that one. Uh, they also got f famous for trying to brew the strongest beer in the world, and originally that was called Tokyo. I think it was around 8%, and that was in 2008. And then 2009, they brewed a beer called Tactical Nuclear Penguin. Kind of nonsense name. Uh, and uh, then they started getting into a uh, alcohol level uh, ABV war with a brewery called Schorsbrauch and uh, producing beers and Schorsbrauch produced one at uh, 40% and then then uh, this is a German brewery so Brewdog uh, attacked them with a beer called Sink the Bismarck uh, <clears throat> of course which is a rallying cry, cry from uh, England or from the UK during the war uh, Sink the Bismarck and that was at 50 54 percent I believe uh, and now some other brewery I can't remember the name has come up with something I think around 60 percent so it's kind of silly but it gets attention it gets it's in the news um, I have to say that there so their beers a lot of there's been some pushback from uh, uh, from uh, I think the craft beer scene uh, for all this attention that they try to get uh, with their weird names and all these these uh, stunts actually you could call them um, they make some wonderful uh, limited beers. Uh, they came, the, uh, there was an event in Kyoto in 2013, uh, about seven years ago now, which I went to at a, uh, one of the best
Northwest craft beer bars at the time called Tigs. Uh, it was an Irish, run by an Irish man named uh, uh, Tig McLaughlin. And Neil Taylor, their representative, came and he brought a variety of beers. And then he had a selection of very limited, their limited beers like Abstract Series, uh, Dog B, uh, Coco Psycho, and, and so a variety of these uh, more expensive, very limited beers. And those are absolutely wonderful, um, you know, aged beers and uh, really extreme beers. So, in any case, we're going to look at a series of uh, Brew Dog beers, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six different beers uh, from BrewDog that are available in Japan. And uh, we're going to start right now. And shall we look at a, another beer from BrewDog? Uh, this is the third one in the series that we're looking at. And this is, a, I think, a more recent one. Uh, I don't recall exactly when it came out. It's called BrewDog. Indie, and it is a Session IPA, uh, India Session Ale, and it clocks in at 4.2%, which seems about right for a, a Session beer. 30 international bittering units, and uh, uh, <clears throat> it has some, some description on the back. It says, an independent pale ale made in Cinemascope, in Scotland. Born of independence, capital I, this is a craft beer for the people. Good honest beer built from hops, barley, yeast, and water. Beer like it should be. Indie dash stereophonic ale for the 21st century. Well, what do we think this means? Cinemascope in Scotland. Cinemascope is, uh, refers to an old form format for filming which was popular in the 1950s and maybe early 1960s, a very large-scale uh, uh, sort of format which was used for some, not, not too many movies, uh, but uh, if you know what IMAX is, uh, maybe a smaller version of IMAX uh, with a uh, very widescreen, kind of curved curved screen and uh, so some old films you might see like uh, some old sand and sandals epics uh, dealing with uh, biblical times or Roman times you may see uh, two lines uh, so basically kind of three pictures and what it was filmed with three different cameras uh, three cameras one in the middle two filming each way so we had three three uh, strips of film to deal with and, and edit into the single image and to make a very large scale. Any case, too much information, I know. S so it's Cinemascope and it's stereophonic. Uh, Cinemascope was three cameras, uh, three strips of film. Stereo, of course, implies two. And <clears throat> we have some interesting artwork. I don't know what it is. And there's, uh, it looks like a radiator, like a, or a air conditioning unit to me. Um, and there's something written. I can see the I N, but I can't see in D anywhere else. Anyway, um, I'm going to give this a go. On Rate Beer, this one has 851 ratings uh, and 428 reviews. Reviews are the ones that are uh, people actually type out their thoughts. And uh, a rating is just simply clicking on the the numbers for each category of aroma, taste. Uh, 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 palette and overall. Um, and the score is pretty low. Uh, 2.86 out of uh, 2.86 average out of 5 and 22 percentile for all beers and 6 percentile for its style which is Session IPA. Untapped, this one has uh, 7,173 ratings and the average is 3.81, a little bit higher, but still not very high. Um, I had this uh, a little over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, and uh, I rated it 3.1, not very high. So we'll see if it's any better now. This, uh, I bought this recently, it has a drink by date of, of December 8th or August 12th, I don't know which, uh, um, this year, 2021. 
so let's give it a go. I don't have high expectations, but let's see. So the malt bill in this is Munich malt, which should give it a darker, slightly darker color, which I don't see here. Uh, wheat and pale ale malt and caramel. The hops are Cascade, Mosaic, and Simcoe. Nice combination. Um, they use Simcoe in a lot of their beers, uh, so a lot of their main beers. Okay, so 30 IBUs. Uh, yeah, what I'm getting out of this is uh, something like grain, uh, kind of light floral, a bit spritzy. Mostly grain. Flavor, pretty much similar. It is a uh, slightly hazy, very pale sort of pink, I mean that pink, a yellow, pastel sort of yellow color with uh, some carbonation rising. Basically I'm getting, uh, from the nose I got some grain or, or straw, hay, something like that, uh, light stone fruit maybe. A hint of tropical note, but not really much. In flavor, again, grain or, or something like biscuit, uh, fruit bread maybe. Very light fruit bread, a touch of caramel, maybe something small and herbal in it, um, and a very light finish, uh, and it finishes, uh, not, not dry, but not bitter, and not sweet, kind of flattens out in the end. It is a session beer, so I guess we shouldn't fault it for that. Uh, it's not a very exciting beer, uh, even as a session beer. Uh, breweries that make session beers often try to, uh, you know, uh, make them pop out with a little bit more hops or, or something interesting in them to uh, take away from the fact that they're very low alcohol and probably low malt. Um, uh, but this one doesn't really do much uh, in that sense at all. Okay, well, I'm going to stop beating up on this beer. It's called Brewdog Indie. It's a uh, session IPA, 4.2%, uh, and... Uh, 30 international bittering units. Give it a go if you want. Uh, I don't think I really recommend this one so highly, uh, but oh, it's also vegan. I have to investigate that more. Is an all beer vegan? Uh, anyway, maybe I have something more to learn here. Okay, good enough. Uh, check out BrewDog online. Uh, their website lists uh, just a brief uh, bit of information. Uh, about each beer that they make. Uh, for example, tasting notes is just a kind of a sliding bar for uh, taste, aroma, and I guess overall, I can't remember, but uh, you know, just showing you the sweetness or bitterness and overall, but uh, mouthfeel. Uh, so not a lot of information. They do tell you what the beer, what ingredients went into the beer, but that's about it. Okay, well, so that's it for now. Uh, we're going to look at some more BrewDog beers in our next uh, review. So, uh, And I'm making a playlist of the BrewDog beers that I'm reviewing, so you can take a look at that as well. Take care and be well. Bye-bye.